how do you how do you introduce more science into the process? So let's talk a little bit about AI and ML. So what we're going to do now is we're going to switch gears a little bit, and uh, I'm going to take I'm going to take you back into target setting, but this is a little bit different example example of target setting. You recall we you know we entered these growth rates and we cascaded the numbers down that's fine you'll notice on this particular target setting dashboard that you know you you would have you know you would be using traditional rates like so for instance uh, traditional approaches right in this case what we used previously was the input growth rate i put in that 12 percent and it just started cascading down right that's fine but how do i know that that 12 percent makes sense right i might have access to the prior year growth which is 24 percent, so maybe i think i'm being conservative but what about bringing in other data sources that could help better inform my target site? So that's where Anaplan's Plan IQ capability comes in. And what is Plan IQ? Plan IQ is really a native integration with Amazon Forecast, as well as Google Vertex AI. So, and, and really what that gives you access to are some, sign, some, some specific algorithms that can be used in, in combination with external data to generate a forecast on an automated basis and then use forecasting accuracy as you know, different metrics to assess the assess those algorithms and determine best fit. So let's go ahead, let's step through this. So yeah, we can input our target, we can you know arbitrarily input our targets, but I think we can probably do a little bit better. So let's go ahead and take a look at some different global variables that we could consider in this exercise. We have things like CPI, consumer price index, we've got interest rates, we've got, you know, you know, other other sort of metrics. And you can see here that we can, you know, we got, you know, average discount rates over time, how many customers we have, how many distinct SKUs we sold, how many new customers we have, we have CPIs, uh, we've got other, you know, CPIs by country, we've got unemployment rates, we've got GDP rates, we've got exchange rates and other other drivers in here. So in this case, what you can do is pull in whatever external, whatever external data you want into Anaplan. Uh, and you can connect to those macroeconomic sites using APIs to kind of bring that data in if you want to. So you can bring in those global variables. Once we bring in that external data, we can also take a look at, you know, uh, reviewing sort of our assumptions and what we uh, reviewing sort of the current state of the plan. So from a workflow perspective, we can see that brand one doesn't have any numbers in. So we're going to set targets for brand one by using a more scientific method. Let's take a look now at, you know, for this particular profit center, the impact of that, um, you know, that those sort of those that external data. What you have the ability to do as a contributor is, first of all, work with that external data set so you'd have access to it, you can view it. You can also assess the collinearity of those of those different metrics as well, because one of the challenges is, you know, selecting related related, you know, selecting external data that's actually related to each other. So Anaplan can filter out what we call, what's called collinearity and to exclude anything that might be used as to predict one of those other drivers, which can then potentially be, a, you know, be a, be a bit of a challenge. But you can, you can have this sort of heat map that tells you kind of what's related to each other and that can affect your decisions of what variables you want to use in your forecast and also whether you want to lag uh, some specific periods you know, to uh, to do that, right? So you've got access to that external. You also have rankings of its importance. So you can see here that there's some metrics that are kind of ranked uh, as sort of as more significant than others. So you could, that can affect your decision of what variables you want to include. Then as you scroll down, you can see, okay, here's our projected related variables. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and change like uh, change one of these. So for instance, maybe I want to change this from a leg one, you know, to a leg three, go back three months. And what Anaplan does is you can see that's kind of updated updated our you know our related variables accordingly so you're able to kind of pick what you want to include from that library get a ranking of kind of how you know how which variables are kind of more more significant and then you can pick how many months back you want to lag you can filter out collinearity etc so that's kind of how the profit center can work with you know the individual contributor can kind of work with that work with that data set and determine what they want to use for their specific uh predictions then they can also go in and um and, and and review these different inputs and also so this is kind of you know this is sort of what we've decided but you can also run scenarios on that right so what if we want what if cpi increased by five percent or maybe even ten percent you can do that and you can see kind of what the impact is what if you know the number of SKUs sold decreased by ten percent what would that mean so even though you've kind of selected that data set that you want to work with 
based on those rankings and so on and how many what lag periods you've selected you also have that additional ability to create different versions of those data sets and model out projected changes to further fine tune the, you know the, the prediction if you will okay so we're kind of reviewing those inputs then if we take a look at um you know what are some of these algorithms that i've mentioned right well i mentioned that it's a native integration with amazon forecast and a plan also integrates with uh, google vertex ai but here's some of those algorithms you can get and again these are commonly accepted so if you search etx ets on uh, on google you'll get the standard definition so here we have a defin definition of the different algorithms so these are kind of the ones that are being used as well so you know just to kind of show you kind of you know the algorithms that are being used here again all, all standardly accept uh, standard accept this uh, all sort of out there if you will or, or standard algorithms that are out uh, that are well known um and then what we would do is go ahead and actually run that external data set through plan iq and what's involved in actually doing that well it's just very quickly here, I'm just going to log into Anaplan. I'm just going to quickly show you something real quick here. I'm going to log in and I'm actually going to go to Plan IQ. And here's where basically what you've got is a native integration with, with, with uh, Amazon Forecast. And so what you're doing is you're setting up what are called data collections directly within Anaplan. So you set up your data collection. So you define kind of the details associated with that, you know, the properties of the data collection, like what historical data you're using, what related data are you using, what attributes are you using. Then you set, then you define like what forecast models you're using as well in terms of its properties. So what metrics, you know, et cetera, what for, and then what forecast uh, actions are you doing in terms of, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, what, what modules are you using, if you were, where do you want to store that sort of result? And, and so you're setting up these, setting up plan IQ or these algorithms directly within Anaplan. It runs that through that native integration through to Amazon forecast, and then puts those results back in Anaplan. So you don't have to leave Anaplan at all to do that. And I call this really data science in a box because it's it's you don't have to go into Amazon forecast and set anything up. You're setting it up with an Anaplan with intuitive menus and 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 point and click and you're you're having the full power of those forecasting engines available within Anaplan. Okay, so then we've got um so then we've got sort of our our you know uh, we've we've run through our we've run it through the engine and then what you get is you know, uh, basically a ranking of those different algorithms based on the accuracy method that you pick. So in this case, we have we can select our accuracy method, and a plan automatically ranks those algorithms. So we go down and take a look at you know what's been ranked number one is the Amazon Auto ML for that for in this case for brand one, and you can see that you can also define your lower and upper confidence intervals, your midpoint, and then what Anaplan does is based on the accuracy method that you pick it automatically ranks the algorithm that has the minimal MAPE, or in this case, mean, uh, mean absolute percent error. Um, so, and then what you're able to, and then what Anaplan does is it automatically forecasts out what, you know, forecast, generates an auto forecast for you based on this algorithm, and then you're able to potentially make adjustments to it. That's really what Plan IQ does, is it automates the forecasting process using more scientific methods and using commonly accepted machine learning algorithms that are out there. And then gives you, again, another, another capability in the toolkit that you can go in and review and adjust, you know, based, based on the outcomes. Okay, so then if, we've, then if we go back to sort of that, that original dashboard, that, that corporate revenue forecast, and what we wanna do now is we wanna bring in our plan IQ results into our target setting model. And now you can see that Plan IQ has actually come back with a growth rate that's very different than what we thought we could achieve. So Plan IQ is another seat at the table that gives you the ability to say, well, just again to evaluate kind of what you're, you know, how you're setting your targets, and then say, you know what, based on that related data, I'm going to go with Plan go with Plan IQ's results and then reset my targets accordingly. So again, just gives you that ability to kind of reassess and gives you a more scientific approach to evaluate kind of how you're how you're setting your targets.